Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm gonna be your host for this awesome uh, photography and retouching session. I am joined here by the wonderful Peter Samuels. Thank How you. are you? I'm good, how are you? It's good to see you again. I'm doing hey. excellent. Very excited to jump into what we have planned for today. Um, and I am going to maybe let Peter do um, a little recap of what we did yesterday. Um, but first, I wanna talk about what we've got planned for the entire day. So maybe we can pull up the schedule. Uh, this morning, we had Kathleen with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, uh, which you folks may have watched just before us. Uh, Samuel, or Peter, Peter Samuel and I <laughs> uh, are here now with photo retouching. Uh, we'll be followed by Howard Pinsky with the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then Julia Masalska will be here with logo design uh, at the end of the day to round out our schedule. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to have um, a few little awesome um, streams as well. So definitely tune in tomorrow. Um, we're gonna have a, a giveaway, a little chat and win at about the 30 minute mark here today. So if you folks are over on YouTube watching the stream, definitely head over to behance.net uh, because we are going to give an awesome sticker mule prize to one lucky active chatter um, at about 30 minutes in. Um, and now I think we can uh, kind of pass things over to you. Uh, you said you're doing well this morning. I am. Peter. Um, maybe we can talk about what we did uh, yesterday just in case there's folks in chat who were not here with us. All right. um, and then we can kind of dive into what we're going to be working on today. Certainly. Um, I was just... We had uh, some pretty epic images of uh, alpacas, alpacas going on Alpacas. We yesterday. were working on, on uh, the, the blonde mm -hmm. Surrey alpaca. Mm -hmm. um, with the epic bangs. With the epic <laughs> bangs, yes. And... Oh, there he is. He's so handsome. Here he is, and, and so um, there's there is a way to go here, but essentially we uh, uh, the uh, uh, he was photographed on that background. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, did some uh, toning and grooming of his hair mm -hmm. a little bit, and uh, did some outlining of him, mm -hmm. which I learned that my Photoshop was not up to date because the brand new <laughs> Content Aware tool is. Yep freaking cool. Yeah, it's super um, awesome. So uh, there was actually a lot more of me uh, uh, learning, I felt like, than, mm -hmm. than uh, showing, but it was really, really fun. Yeah, it and was a, a lot fun of time. interaction, and that was, yeah, it was, it was a fun gig. So, um, so I had, essentially though, I took, uh, while, while Hatoon here was photographed on this background, mm -hmm. um, I, I, to clean up the background from, all the uh, paper marks and everything below, I had also photographed the background uh, plain. Mm -hmm. Without and him on it. Without him on mm -hmm. it, so I had a clean version of the background, and so the whole exercise of that was um, a, a, how a, a process of cleaning up the background by adding a, a, a clean plate of the background to the subject and then uh, a, a painting back in the original shadows and then cleaning up those little spots and, and such. Nice, nice. So, um, and we spent the whole show doing that and chit-chatting. And it was fun. It was, it was fun. a good time. It was, it was a yeah. very good time. We got to look at um, other awesome samples of your work um, because you have, though you do uh, regular, um, I would say, I'm, I don't want to say regular photography, but though you do photograph people, uh, you have a lot of really fabulous uh, animal photography, um, which is awesome. So we kind of came in and we looked through um, his wonderful uh, website, which I'm gonna pull up these um, these horses because they're just spectacular. Um, you guys can go to petersamuels.com if you'd like to see more samples of his wonderful work. Um, but we are going to jump into what you have planned for us today. Why don't you tell us what we're gonna be working on? Um. So uh, uh, today we're going to do uh, um, a, a few easier images. Okay. Um, so we can kind of get through some. Okay. Uh, and to start things off, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a a new image that um, uh, that uh, um, that I that that I haven't. Uh, published yet. So it's a it's kind of a sneak peek. It's maybe, a bit of a sneak peek nice. and so um and, and so this is um and so these are the raw files. This this is um uh 
the baby porcupine. Oh no! Who, um, and let me. Uh, he has little hands. Let me give her a, a base level <gasps> light in here. And does does he have a does he have a name? A she. She does she have um, a name? She's very fabulous. So, she actually did not come with. She was not named yet. Oh. So. Everyone's Officially, she's Sonic. baby. <laughs> she's baby porcupine. Sonic is interesting um, because I, I do need hedgehog, to choose. I, I do need to choose a name, and um, I am uh, thinking of going with um, Piney. Piney. All right. Uh, how do Piney's you like? adorable. Yeah. What is what? Everybody in so, chat. What do you guys think of Piney? It looks like everyone. I can. I. I can bet that. Everyone's gonna start uh, sharing name ideas in the chat too. Uh -huh, okay. As soon as you said she's not named, I knew it. So I they're gonna go. <laughs> and I, I don't like to, uh, um, you know. Oh. I'd rather they they have a, um, a, a name. Yeah. But uh, this is one of those cases where they didn't. Um, Gosh, and so. This is so great. About I, how large is she? She's like this. About this big. Yeah. Oh, okay. She, because uh, I can't really tell like how big she is by looking at her, but I assume that she's not like massive because she's a baby. Me briefly, see if I can pull up. Steve uh, Casaboom says, um, "Piney the Younger." Piney the Younger. <laughs> That's a nice title. <laughs> That's a great call. And Jan says we could name her Pointy. Pointy is cool. <laughs> But I think Piney the Younger sounds like very we're, majestic. We're doing really well with Piney the Younger. Yes. Um, let's see, let's, where is he? How difficult was it for um, her to hold that pose? Was she just kind of walking around freely in the studio and you were just photographing her as she interacts with her space? Or how, how did that actually work? Because I know you said it's well, kind of different so with each animal. This is at an animal trainer facility. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and so there's a person who has a, a relationship with her, okay. and she's really quite gentle. and And I had no idea how how adorable uh, uh, porcupines were <laughs> and, until this. Um, there are a few animals they, that are actually she was deceivingly cute. Really, yes, there, there, yes, there are, mm -hmm. uh, and she was super easy to work with. Really. Uh, she eats carrots. I can see that. She looks, uh, she looks like she really likes those carrots. Right. And let's see if these have loaded here. I updated Bridge, too, so it's it's rebuilding the cache. Well, that's all right. While it's loading, we can kind of just discuss things and um, talk about uh, the experience of just being in the studio with the um, with the animals. Um, was she was she quite soft? Because I can't. She kind of looks a little she, coarse, but was soft. She was yeah. soft. Okay. Yeah, and and it's not like you're at a uh, a continual concern mm -hmm. of. Um, oh dear. Yeah. Is that a squirrel? It is. Oh no. <laughs> I know it was a big day. Yeah, squirrels are adorable. You know what? Baby skunks are actually really, really cute, like deceptively cute. If you've never seen a baby skunk, they are absolutely Pretty adorable. Pretty darn, yes. They're, they are darling. That's a perfect way of describing it. Oh, I mean, pretty darn. Oh, pretty darn pretty cute. Darn. Oh, I thought you said pretty yeah. darling, but. but pretty but darling? That, yeah, Michelle pretty darn as well. Both? We yeah. Both, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so, in this oh, behind wow. the scenes where. Um, so she's just up on the table and you have like this. She's up on the set. table and I, uh, she's on a set. Um, this facility, like, they had a kind of this garage like structure. Oh, wow. And I felt like that was enough. Uh huh. Um, and so I didn't have to rent like an external studio, mm -hmm. as the day was pretty expensive yeah. as, as it was. Um, and, and so yeah, there's your. Yeah, that's great. So so with a photo shoot like this, like did did she react? Um, like I was, I would wonder if they would react poorly to having the lights on them and things, because it's very <clears> different <throat> than I'm sure what they're used to, maybe. So that's that is what you get with a uh, when you work through an animal trainer with mm -hmm. some with more exotic animals, mm -hmm. like farm farm animals, fiber animals, mm -hmm. fiber animals. We didn't we didn't touch on that yesterday, but an alpaca oh, is a is, fiber is animal. a fiber animal, okay. an animal that's not grown for livestock. It's mm -hmm. grown for their fur mm -hmm. and. 
here in California, especially, um, there is a slow clothing movement. Mm -hmm. So that being people who grow the animal, have the animals for the fiber, mm -hmm. and then they, when they shear them, they, uh, uh, you know, use a loom and to make and the thread and the yeah everything. It's a whole you know uh, thing. So these type of, you know uh, porcupines considered an exotic, mm -hmm. and um, so the way they w what you get with it uh, with a facility like this is the the animals used to working or okay. it's used to being on set. They they, All right. they have gotten them acclimated. To that sort of behavior this, to, and that to the, atmosphere. To the, atmo to the environment, yes. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Um, that's very interesting to me because that's usually what I'm thinking, like when I see the final product, right, of like you see pictures and photo uh, photos of animals, um, that's usually what I'm wondering. It's just like how did somebody get this image of this animal and how unruly was this animal? How hard was it to take this photo? You know, like were, did, were they, you know, very okay, very comfortable in the space like while photos were being taken or was it kind of a hassle? Like I always kind of have that on my mind. Um, but these tail. are great. I know, she's so cute. I didn't realize they had like a short little, a little, little stubby tail. Yeah. Like that. That's really cute. Well, Did I interrupt is... a thought? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm I'm just enjoying seeing all the different shots. I'm wondering uh, which one um, you uh, think is but guess what? Uh, good to choose. Guess what? What? Porcupine butt. <laughs> Okay. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. you, win, you, win the, you win the joke Do award for the day um, <laughs> over Jan Eric because that is something Jan Eric would say okay. in the chat. <laughs> I could tell you were up to something. You had this little twinkle in your yeah, eye I'm for like, a moment there. <laughs> oh, God, this joke got easy. So uh, um, I know which one we're going to get to, but I'm just going to give you all a little sneak peek here. So she's reaching up for a, for a oh, carrot. Dear. Uh, we do have a question and for you from yes. Alberto who wants to know if you've ever photographed sea otters. Is that something you've ever done before? No, well, sea animals don't really... Um, I, I, because I'm a studio setting person. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to go animal, to where the water is and as do of, all that. Yeah, it's, mm. yes. Not as fun, especially with your equipment. I assume. Well, it's a, <laughs> it would be a whole other production mm -hmm. that would yet to be defined and somehow. Um, so not yet. Not yet. Not, yeah. not I like the yet. Yeah, not yet. Sure, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> otters Things. are one of those animals that are super, super cute. Otters absolutely mm -hmm. fit and in my mind's those, eye those of this teeth. storybook animals because uh, we were yes. discussing yesterday that mm -hmm. it, how I choose my my subjects is um, uh, I, I, is, is what what resonates with, with you. my childhood mm -hmm. vision of animals and, and what, you know, like the archetype that I see in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and and actually, like, there's been some animals that I photographed that I didn't really have that. Really? And in the final, uh, the result was less, less of a home run. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yeah. But otters so, definitely fit into that. Otters are, that yeah. Excellent. Like, if I could figure it out, that mm -hmm. would be the, the one. So, good question. <laughs> yeah, that was from uh, Alberto, I believe. Um, and keep the uh, keep the questions coming. Um, we are eager to um, know your thoughts and what you guys um, are wanting to know about Peter's work. So, All right. and we're, a um, fox would be adorable to photograph. This from Marissa, I believe, okay, haven't so you? We have a fox in the queue. Yeah, we do. Uh -huh. So probably we will probably be able to uh, to see some of those, Marissa. You may just get your uh, your wish. Yeah, the, uh, uh, Tuck, His the red Tuck. fox. Oh, yeah. that's that's adorable. This and little face right here is just precious. Right. So th do uh. they have posable thumbs? Or because it kind of looks like she can grip things, like she's holding the carrot in her hand. I think it's. I think we got four. Or just a. I think we have a four claw, a four. Gotcha. Yeah, but. Um, they certainly look like little hands. They they do. <laughs> um, now the raccoon I think has uh, 
unopposable, but raccoons frighten me. <laughs> like I understand they can be really cute as too cute too, but I lived um, uh, in the in the mountains for a long time where they get really really big, um, and they're they're very bold. Um, and and have very little fear, so so they're 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 a little scary to me. In, indeed, <laughs> they they uh, they are fearless. Mm -hmm. um, but I I did photograph a raccoon on this day as well. Oh, did you and, really? And he he was super cute. What was his name? Did he have a name? Um, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here. Remember all the personal information about all of these animals. Remember <laughs> how I said I I I. I pour over the edit. Yeah. So I've been kind of going through one animal at a time, mm -hmm. and I haven't done the raccoon yet. Oh, okay. So his his name is escaping me. Oh, gotcha. All right. Um, I because my file the, the 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 file structure is just porcupine. I mean uh, raccoon. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. And uh, so yeah, don't uh, don't distract me just yet. <laughs> Sam Peterson. I remember Val's distaste for raccoons. Oh yes. Oh yeah. It was a whole big deal. Um, Tracy, uh, Tracy Bradshaw wants to know what your most difficult animal was to photograph that you had the most trouble with. Or I wonder, the, I wonder the if the alpacas that means, like, were pretty, were pretty, pretty challenging. Enemy. There's been a few horses that oh, were difficult, so. but it wasn't the horses as much as the grandness of the set mm. and trying to get everything to work. And how large the animal is and just like, I yeah, would think that that like would be pretty. If yeah, I can actually it, pan uh, over um, here. There's one where, this one. Uh-huh, this one um, here. Oh, okay, wow. so Touche's in a, that's Touche, and he's a, a Lusitano. Mm -hmm. He's in a giant round pen, mm -hmm. so which means, so they can, you know, they can run them really smoothly. And, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and that set was just so big, Gosh, and it's beautiful. And it, it was just really difficult to get my light close enough mm -hmm. and far enough away, close enough with enough power, um, and far enough away so it's out of the set, and far enough away so uh, Touche has room to run without getting in the way of it. Mm -hmm. And we're we since it's an outdoor pen and I'm using my strobe light, we're we're shooting at night. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you is like how did you get that dark atmosphere with just the, the ground there? And I was thinking you must be shooting. Well that is a, a twenty foot by twenty foot uh, black duvetine hanging okay. behind it. Oh behind. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that is just I could see how that would be like a serious um, feat to kind of accomplish though. Um, with such a large animal and such an interesting workspace, that's really fascinating. Um, all right, maybe we can. Yeah, let's go come back, back to over to you and see what you are up to. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little bit of light balancing here. Maybe see if there we go. We're gonna neutralize. It's a little warm. There we go. Back. Yeah, Eric and Sue then... loved the image. I agree, Eric. It's very beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we're gonna do. Um, where is my? Uh, um, yeah, Nikita is talking about um, asking how the animals react to the flash and the, and the bright light, and I would assume that maybe goes with what you were saying earlier, where they have like a trainer or a handler who prepares them for situations like that because. They've you know. Yes, so they've they've gotten used to it, and and there's a lot of love being given to them right there. And so mm -hmm. um, they're getting like showered with snacks and gifts and pets and, and love. I, yes, <laughs> yes. If I were a porcupine, I think that I would probably love having my my photo taken. If I had all the carrots that I could want, and sure. All the pets and kisses, and I'm the center of attention. <laughs> I think it'd be a pretty fabulous uh, situation. Kerwin, welcome in. Adobe fam greets you, yes. <laughs> there we go, okay. And which one is this? 
I like that we can see the little the little uh, and, and carrot before, in her mouth. Right, and before we go there, I'm just gonna show you the uh, um, a few other favorites. So the, oh dear. I like the little I mean, pose. You could, seriously, that yes. She has a, she, that one. Oh my gosh, that is like a like a perfect little stance where she's just mm -hmm. like I can imagine her just kind of shuffling around. Does she does she walk like that or does she walk on all fours? She walks on all fours. She does. Okay, because like because that little hunch it kind of makes it look like she just walks on her back legs and just like hobbles around. No, she's <laughs> she's reaching up. So this I think this is this is her normal, mm -hmm. you know, right there uh, stature. Gotcha. But she goes up to munch on her food, and then oh no, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, and this is a favorite oh, too. Dear. Uh, I mean, like a little Yoda. I know exactly. That's that is the exact kind of stance and stature that this porcupine has. Very Yoda esque. So this is what happens when things go well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again for the answer. Oh, no problem, Nikita. That's how we also treat our hosts, snacks, treats, and compliments. No pets, though. That would be weird. I know. I, I know. leave my dog at home. <laughs> All right, I'm very excited about this. This is super cool. All right, so this is gonna do a little quick content aware. Sam, yeah. I was thinking the exact same thing. Sam says that that pose where she was kind of hunched over makes him want to paint a fantasy character based off of her because her pose is so good. I was thinking that. I was like, it looks like some kind of like, it was like almost a wizened pose in a way. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, the, 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 like, the Yoda factor, yeah, right? Yeah, like some you know? kind of like ancient, all-knowing like creature. And she was just kind of like, like she's about to dictate to you while you, why you were wrong just now. She's gonna, she's gonna give right. you a lesson. <laughs> so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna increase the uh, the darks and bring the whites up a little bit. I always watch the uh, the levels, and I don't, I try not to go too far, mm -hmm. so I can see what happens if I take it right to here. Mm -hmm. And that's all right. I might back that off just a bit. And, okay. Jason's jealous of her hair. That, that may have, I think that warmed her up a little bit. Let me see what happened there. Yeah, that seems like it, a little bit, yeah. So, or it just brought the warmth kind of out of brought her. Brought the warmth yes, out. Yeah. But um, I will just bring that back down a little bit. There we go. It's almost like she's wearing like little pants, like fur pants. It's very cute. And so let's see, is that a, that's her tongue. It's oh, not a carrot. Oh, is that her tongue? Not a carrot. And so um, what I'm gonna do here is use the uh, the healing brush. Oh yes, kind of, the spot healing oops, brush. Not on the hue saturation layer though. <laughs> Nice. And it's kinda... So convenient. So easy, yeah. Uh, Jan Eric is saying, um, just a tip, you can right click the image and do edit in Photoshop instead of exporting the image as a PSD, um, which is quicker and simpler to edit in Photoshop. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Um, you, you are right, and because I'm actually new to Lightroom, mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten used to that flow. Okay. I'm yeah. still in the flow of my uh, Capture One, um, where I would process images in Capture One because, mm -hmm. I, because it tethers really well and it's tethered since before Lightroom tethered. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just been kind of stuck in that mm -hmm. workflow and then it processed the image in Capture One. Then, then I live in Bridge and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, but kudos to you, honestly, for like, just like, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm jumping into Lightroom and I'm just gonna do this. Like that is super awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, we've got about three minutes and some change here before okay. we do the chat and win. So just a quick reminder for those of you who are over on you YouTube, definitely come over here to behance.net and be active in the chat uh, because we are going to be giving away an awesome prize to one lucky active chatter uh, once the buzzer goes down. And maybe we can think of something to ask them. Like yesterday, I believe I asked what their favorite animal was. Um, just to get them chatting in the chat and, mm -hmm. and stuff while we take a break and watch our little video. Um, so maybe we can think of a question that we might like to ask the chat today um, while they're uh, waiting. Well, we for asked them for a name. And we've got oh, we did ask them for a name. Piney the Little? Piney the Younger. The Younger. Yeah. So maybe we can get, that. when we go to chat and win, we will ask you folks for some more um, names because who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll read one that we like more than Piney. Right. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful photo, says Francisco. Thank you. I'm excited about her. She's really cool. So <laughs> That face um, you do when Adobe gets your subject selection perfect. It's a good face. It's a satisfied uh -huh. face. <laughs> in, in, in fact, I have uh, texted this image um, to a few friends. And, As like a reaction? And I, well, I put, I, I put a little bubble on it, mm -hmm. and you could say anything. Mm -hmm. and, it's appropriate yeah, and for I'm a like, lot of occasions. I, I think we're going to have some porcupine memes. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, built from here. So this, Jan, is, this, this, is, what I call a, this is what I call a home run. There's, there's shoots mm -hmm. where you kind of get base hits, mm -hmm. and then there's, there's home runs. And this, you this know. This is a, yes. The, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. This make, that's makes me happy. This is this is what fuels me. <laughs> <laughs> Art and porcupine memes. Good to know. And, <laughs> and she wasn't about to like, you know, spring her quills up. Mm -hmm. It's a that that is something that she does. Really. When, it, yeah, because it takes a while to get those back, mm -hmm. right? So oh, they're yeah, careful. Yeah. Same thing with a skunk. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. You know. They got to recharge. Yep. They so do. they better mean they it. They do indeed. Yes. Um, so she was nothing but adorable, um, and I, I think we're gonna call. I mean, in in, I mean, there's still like cleanup to do down here, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna go there with that. So in in order to uh, hit a, a few more images, okay, I yeah, think we can call this, and, um, and that is beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we'll go um, back. So, Maria says uh, she came here just to watch you, Peter. Um, and now she's finding out about awesome uh, giveaways and prizes. Yeah, and so she's, extra, she's extra excited. Thank you. It's awesome. Oh, it's so cute. She reaches up and get. So is she a, is she a quick animal or is she does she is she a, like kind of a mosier? Like that's what I'm wondering if she. She's, she's a mos. Fast? She's a. She just she's a waddler. Does her little thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, a, and a shuffler. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of does her little scoot scoot across the. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Super cute. That sounds uh, awesome. Just like stole the show. Mm -hmm. Everyone on set was just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's so cute. That must be so fun, like getting to meet so many different new animals and things. Um, I assume you, you, like, you get to meet animals that most people will never see in person, like in their whole lives sometimes. Which is super awesome. <laughs> City folks, I guess. Yeah. Yes, you know. <laughs> All right, we've got about three seconds until chat and win. So please, in chat, uh, let us hear some of your ideas for a name for Piney, um, and we will be right back after this quick uh, little video. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We are going to be using the power of Adobe Magic to summon an awesome winner that will appear in the space between me and Peter uh, here in just a few moments. But until then, I am going to uh, read some of these uh, name ideas. We've got Grimmel, that's interesting. Shuffler is cute. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have Sharps. That's kind of adorable. That's like a nickname. Like Sharps. Sharps. Sharps is cute. Uh, Patricia Picklebottom. 
That, <laughs> that, Ariana, well done. We've can got I, Can Delphi. I modify that to yeah, Pickler? She, Pickler, yeah, Patricia Pickler. Pick, what's that's Pickler? That's, Pickler is adorable. Um, Phoebe is, that's a cute name for a uh, porcupine. Mm -hmm. That's a good porcupine name. Petunia. Petunia. Uh, Fluffy. We've got Pinecone. Stickers the porcupine. Very cute. Oh, it looks like Francisco Stickers. Martinez is our winner today. Congratulations. Uh, you have just won 100 free custom three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Uh, definitely keep an eye on your Behance inbox. Somebody from our team will reach out to you with information on how to claim your prize. And if you did not win today, fear not, we have a gift for everyone. If you head over to uh, stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, uh, you guys can actually get 10 free custom stickers for $1. Uh, so even though you're only getting 10, you still get to upload your own custom artwork and get some custom stickers. Stickers um, for a buck, which is pretty pretty cool. I think you know it's a pretty good deal, right? Um, so uh, there you go. Um, go forth, design stickers. If you guys make stickers, please share them with us because we love to see the stickers right. that people make. Here. I might have to make some porcupine stickers. You should make some porcupine mm -hmm. stickers. That should definitely happen. Um, please tell me about this magnificent creature that is on the screen right uh, now. Uh, this, this is fabulous. This is Daisy the Zonkey. The Zonkey. Zonkey. That is. That so is. Cool. Is correct. Look so, at those legs. Um, I don't, let me see if my I don't like to brighten from here, but I'm just gonna do you know, brighten by two steps here. Uh, maybe let's see. This is why I don't really I don't typically uh, edit on my laptop mm -hmm. because I I just don't trust the color, the color and, the, and the contrast yeah. is a little <laughs> in heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting used to Lightroom here, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if there's how, I'm, I'm not fully understanding how it renders a raw file or if there's oh, any gotcha. influence in there at all. Mm -hmm. So um, for now, to so we can all see it, I'm just gonna brighten the screen a little bit. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> so uh, de, de, the zonkey is just what you would think. Mm -hmm. She is a um, zombie donkey. Zombie donkey, yes, okay. Um, mm -hmm. She is, she, she is a, a zebra donkey. <laughs> I honestly, I had assumed zombie donkey. I think everyone in chat assumed zombie donkey when you said zonkey. I mean. What? Yes, Alberta. exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah. No. Right. It is real, Kathleen. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just so, beautiful. Daisy is essentially, she's an, at the equine equivalent of a labradoodle. Nice, nice. Okay. Right. And, um, uh, uh, Dr. Google says that there are 18 known hybrid animals. Really? So um, now I don't know if that's you know accurate or not. I think but, I only know. And like it was a board panda them. link on top of that. But panda link? Board panda. Oh, oh, okay, okay, and, gotcha. Um, you know, so and your liger mm -hmm. is in yeah, there. Yeah, the liger, the the zonkey, the labradoodle. No, um, well, um, I don't think they didn't put the labradoodle's not on there. No, there was. Well, because it's just, um, I guess it's just dogs. But, right. But isn't there isn't there some kind of hybrid between, um, like, dogs and coyotes or, like, wolves and coyotes, too, I think? There was I believe like there was. I think there is. There was, like, a beefalo, which yeah. was unattractive. <laughs> that was not, unattractive. Did not, did not oh, look no. like a happy animal. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, <clears throat> There's your new series. Track down and 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 find I, and no, meet all of the hybrid I, animals. No, yeah. No matter how strange they are. Strike me down if I actually find a centaur. <laughs> um, you'd literally so, be rich. You'd be you'd be like 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 so famous for finding the centaur. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Could could you go to my Instagram yes, and I'll absolutely. show you a behind the scenes of shooting yes, a please. photography. Yes, please. Let's this one so, right here. This video. This one. Okay. And I want to see you. Okay, so this this is in Gilroy, California. Mm -hmm. Let me um, see if I can zoom in. And a so bit. I Here went. We oh, wow. I went to the ranch. She's brought in my gear, and and you know, to the question, a little surprise at the end. Look at her little friend on her, the side. Her little oh, no. friend. That's her pal. <laughs> She's unhappy. They're they're. A, they're a bonded pair. Are they really? Yes. Oh my goodness. And so, so when so when Daisy first there. showed up, uh -huh. um, Donatello is the other one. Oh no. Uh, when Daisy showed up, uh, uh, Daisy could almost fit 
under Donatella's legs. Oh no, really? Yeah. And then so she just got much, much larger. Yeah, she's uh, she's uh, almost two years old here. Oh, that's so cute. So so then you didn't you and, didn't. And do this, this is how this goes. It's a him. it's a team. You know, you want. Uh huh. You need people, like a bunch and of people especially helping. with a large animal. You you. Um, you want somebody standing at the lights so they don't go, so they don't uh, yeah. walk into them. You want to um, have on something. people giving um, attention, mm -hmm. lots of love. Uh, so, so when you guys did this, Donatello came along because they're a mated pair. So he wasn't really in the he, photo he, shoot. He, but he was there for emotional support. Yes, he was oh. like in the sidelines there, and uh, oh, that's so precious. Oh yeah. no. So. Um, I will go through a few of these. There she is. He's so small and just like chunky. He's a, I love him <laughs> over on the side in the darkness there, yeah. just watching over her. So is he the same um, kind of? If he is, he, is he a donkey as well, or is he? Uh, no, he is a donkey. He is a donkey. Yeah. That is Daisy's too cute. the only. Uh, 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 sorry for doing the. There we go. Oh, there's both so, of them. Oh my goodness. So she got in for a few. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is just precious. And with horses, you know, you always want the ears. <laughs> Paco says, where's Leonardo and Michelangelo? Is <laughs> that a is that a, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles joke? Duh. 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 <laughs> Waiting Fine. for the oh, next picture. I didn't to get be that reference, but turtles now I in do. a half shell, Peter. Turtles in a half a shell. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Turtle power. Come on, guys. Now you got me started. You're never going to invite me back. I'm going to start singing the song. <laughs> um, so here we we have Zonk, it, we have Daisy. I love the and cross legs like that. Oh, goodness. With the, I know. Such a beautiful animal. Just so unique. Just. And Kathleen's like, stop. <laughs> Turtle power, Kathleen, come on. You know the song. The donkey is his manager. <laughs> the donkey was there like, just pose your leg just so. There you go. Good job, honey. You're well, doing great. <laughs> you know, so she was going to give me either a, uh, um, I, I was warned that uh, she was either going to give me a, her a donkey day mm -hmm. or a zebra day. Which is worse? I could I don't and know. If I zebra could would be feral. Okay. And, and a donkey, donkey is more be... docile. Really? So when you say a donkey has... day, I Im immediately I'm worry a... about someone getting kicked. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I guess that makes more sense the way that you put it. <laughs> right. Right. Her inner donkey versus her inner zebra. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. And and so. It, it was anybody's, you know, it was just a gamble that we mm -hmm. had to, uh, you know, give it a try. Anyone's guess And is we had she would a be. donkey to she was just a, 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 like a, a stunning model. Oh, wow, yeah. She just really is like, hello, I'm here. Mm, yes. Look how pretty I am. <laughs> Press and Y so. to pet. Everyone in the chat pressing Y to pet the, the zonkey. <laughs> <laughs> you guys That's are awesome. funny. All right. And so, and this one's pretty much, well, I would still do, I would still do more. I would clean her up here. Mm -hmm. Racine, I welcome would, in. Let's see if it's still. So when I process these, I always have a session folder. So here's the zonkey, and then the capture, the output. Look at all the Ys coming in, because they want to pet. <laughs> Everybody's just spamming Ys. You guys are so funny. <laughs> um, somebody says that he's still, uh, Jason says, I'm still on Zabronki. That's what he wants it to be oh, called, the Zabronki. Zabronki. I feel like that's also like a doable name, Zebronki. But Zonkey sounds more like it could like it could be like a zebra donkey or it could be like a undead mythical creature. <laughs> like you like the the zombie donkey. Right. Which, you know. So Absolutely. I don't know. Oh, I missed my opportunity to just uh 
uh, edit in Photoshop right there. So we'll, we'll do that on the next one. Yeah, let's go for it. Um, um, Steve um, Kossaboom says Zebron James. Oh, nice. Is that what you want? <laughs> Name. Well, Daisy already has a name. We could secretly call her Zebron James, though. All right. If we want. I can I can work with that. So in this case, the highs. Yeah, but that just raises the background too much. If I take the the highs up to the to where the, the natural hit, where the histogram hits. I trust your uh, creative choices on this, because you are the the expert here. That is so, oh my goodness. Uh, so does she have soft stripes on the side of her ribs there too? Or, is, oh, or yeah. am I imagining those? You know, go back okay. to my Instagram. Yeah, I will pull that up. And then here's oh, a great my goodness. shot of her. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up the Instagram here in a second so that you folks can see as well. And we can cycle through these. Oh goodness, yeah, let me see if I can. Enlarge this a little bit so you guys can see. Look at the beautiful stripes along the that. See that even shows more of the zebra coming out there. It does. It does. So it was a tough edit, but the, I'm really wow. happy with the. Yeah, the even on that the I back picked. of the neck there, like from the mane down into the and side of the neck, there's stripes, and that is just oh. That and, is and that is actually like. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, they're so cute. I like how he's just like. He's like he's like so round and just like happy to be here uh -huh. <laughs> with my babe. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's so cute. They're precious. All right, we can switch back over to her. She also has the beautiful stripes like in her face, like in between her eyes there, down her forehead. Yes. Um, which is just really really cool. I'm kind of like discovering new little markings on her the closer I look. Right. Yeah. Uh and she's got the vertical stripes here, mm -hmm. and her mane is is just stellar. Yeah. So um, coming in here, I'm oh interesting. I don't know. Let's uh, bring this. There you go. Not much needed here. What is the oldest animal in the world? I don't know, Jan. Are you gonna tell us? I feel like that's that's too tricky of a question for Peter. Like he can't possibly know which one's the oldest. A zebra because it's in black and white. Oh my goodness, uh, Jan. Uh -huh. Oh no. <laughs> Sometimes Jan tells jokes in the chat and I I don't know. I I kind of give my, myself a headache with how hard I roll my eyes. Uh -huh. <laughs> And he knows it. Like I think that that's like the name that he's made for himself in this chat. Is he's like the pun master. Gotcha. But sometimes they hurt. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Alberto says "badumps." Uh -huh. Good job. <laughs> she does have sweet eyes, Katie. She definitely does. <laughs> there we go. To kind of bring Francisco. <laughs> And there you go. So again, I would clean all this up. Mm -hmm. Either either just clean it up here or use a... Um, like a blank one, uh, similar yeah. to what we did. Yeah, another plate of the background only. It's like an old school term to say plate, mm -hmm. but it's another frame. <laughs> um, so there you have Daisy. That is just beautiful. She is such a gorgeous animal. I can't wait to see what we have next. Are we switching? Are we doing another we're switching, day? Or we're, we're switching we're, animals. We're, we're gonna um, we're gonna switch animals. Uh, uh, how's our time? Um, we, are we we are doing we're doing good. Um, we have um, quite a bit of time left. We still have like more than half an hour like to get into stuff. Okay, like you're on a okay. roll this so, morning. So right, I, yeah. After yesterday, I'm like, okay, we gotta cover some ground <laughs> now that I've updated mm -hmm. Photoshop yeah to discover all the, the, all the crazy cool stuff everything. I'm yes. like oh my gosh the content aware is just a whole new world uh, and and you can it, 
you know, adding text is something that's really, really useful. <laughs> you know, that I do a lot for various things. Yeah, and, why not? Um, to add speech bubbles to your porcupine memes. I did that on my that's, phone. Oh, you did that on your phone. Okay. Yeah. Well, now in, you can do using it Using markup. I was, it was really easy. I was like, nice. <laughs> I started looking for an app that would do it. And then I realized that markup actually just... has a, you know, yeah. Um, all right. So an, another uh, uh, unpublished one is oh no here comes another joke from from Jan you'll now you'll know exactly what I All meant. right okay when the zoo, when the zookeeper told me the animals were not for sale I asked why the zebra had a barcode <laughs> yeah you like think about it for a second and you're like oh dear <laughs> he's uh, he's definitely our resident that's, comic that's, relief that's, though that's solid. in the chat yeah I, it is solid but it's just never what I think it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> we adore you, well, Jan. You know that. Why don't sharks like clowns? Why? They taste funny. <sighs> no! Yeah. No! I know. No! Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. You you and Jan would get along very well. <laughs> uh, there's two. There's two of you. What do I do? <laughs> Oh, and now we're on the uh, the fox. This is Tuck. Tuck. The fox. Who was it that was uh, wondering if we had fox images um, earlier? Someone some... asked specifically. Right, right. And oh, so he's we so got handsome. A, a, and so we have a fox in the queue. And about how big is he? Uh, like, would you say was he like, like large? Like, oh, so he's like, like a, a mini, mini. Like a Aussie. Okay. Um, like a small dog. Australian Shepherd. Kind of. Oh, Let's see so if cute. I can. Uh, where, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm gonna go to my history here. Oh, come on. A quick brown fox. I see what you did that, what you did there, Hildy. I, I see you, I get you. That's usually the Noted. quick brown fox uh, yes, thing that's, for fonts. I nice. mean, I in the, in the graphic design world, it. yes, right? <laughs> but yes. Um, Ariana, ooh, look at Tuck. I know. He's very handsome. Oh, yeah, there. We can kind of see um, what he looked like. He's very, like, kind of shifty in a way. Like, he looks like he could be friendly or he could just, like, bolt real quick. Like, that's the vibe he gives me. <laughs> By design. <laughs> By design, yes. Yeah. Indeed. Um. And, and he was actually pretty easy to work with, but our, our timing was a little off. Oh, really? Um, and so, you know, they all, all each animal has its own fuse, mm -hmm. right? There's gonna be something. Um, you, th that um, with the squirrel, for example, um, she, he was cool until he's done eating nuts. And then he's just like, I'm and he's, nothing here. Then he's me. a squirrel. He's like, yeah, you know. on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would okay. love to see the squirrel one too. Um, That's adorable. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I can, if I, I can do a, a, a quick browse of that. All right. Um, but Tuck here, with the, the timing was a little off, and he's mm -hmm. kind of a youngster. Um, he literally fell asleep. No, really? Oh, that's precious. Oh, no. And so in his case, we were done uh -huh. when like, he was quick. just like would not get up. He's like, good night. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Did you get any pictures of him sleeping? Yeah, let's see. Philippa um... Gomes, welcome back in. Why do I have this blue thing? Let's see, am I in a space? You know why I have this? Hmm. hmm. Good. Good. Is something sure. undone somewhere else? Okay. Let's see what's going on in chat. Uh, I think he was just saying that the general size of the fox compared to a dog was like the, yeah, like the um, Aussie, um, for sure. I think actually, Kathleen, don't you have? Uh, isn't isn't uh, Kathleen has a beautiful dog named Kakashi, and I think he is one of those dogs, the the Aussie Shepherd dogs. Oh. I think he is, and it's just beautiful. So that's why Maybe she was a like smaller, you, probably yeah. like a 
you mentioned he's that probably she like was a like, 20 pounder actually really oh wow and look at he's very Wait. oh he's super handsome oh no oh he's yawning so he's he's right there That's the a good trainer look. is holding the leash mm -hmm. off to the side and mm -hmm. uh and and we're giving him treats and uh making noises and getting him to to look this way and that way and here is where he started getting tired oh no tired <laughs> Tired. Yeah. And, oh, that's and, so cute. And we got him back up for a little bit. And then. Oh, it's yawn his and tired eyes. Yeah. A little more. And, and poof, he's done. And then he's just like, all right. So we try back. to get him, you know, we try to get him back up and then until he just goes down and then up and then, and then we're like, okay, we got yeah, it. Yep, he's, he's, we, he's we, good. We're cool. So amazing to see all this from Eric Sue. Yeah, I know, it's because it's, it's one thing to like be able to see the images that you've chosen and get to see you work on the images, but also to get like a little backstory into like the photo shoot for all of these. I feel like I've met the animal too which is really cool, uh, which is just super fun. What's your average number of shots in one session? This from um, uh, Muriel, I believe is her name. I'm gonna say 300. 300 about? Does it vary from animal to animal, or is that like your base where you know, like, okay, I haven't taken enough shots yet. I'm gonna work on some more until you get to about that. Until you that get place. to that point where you're you're feeling you're feeling good. Let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, um, oh. So with the fox, it was 213. Okay, so ballpark around that, you know. Yeah. Around that area. Gotcha. More or less, depending on how fast we get into the zone. Mm -hmm. right? Or if your fox falls asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he, he did shorten that. Jose Vadi says, this is a flip book of cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I agree, it is indeed a flip book of cute. And so I've done some adjustments here, but it doesn't need too much. However, um, I instead of the gray, I, I wanted to use this sort of royal blue background. Yeah. Um, and that sounds awesome. I'd like to see if I can neutralize that just a little bit. So I'll go in here and there we go. Also, we've got about 35 minutes until the design feedback countdown is up. Uh, so those of you who have not checked out the challenge tab already, definitely do so. We've got an awesome Photoshop daily creative challenge uh, that was actually broadcast just before our segment here today. And we encourage you all to check that out and create an entry for the challenge and share it with us uh, in Discord. And real quick, I'm gonna pop over here to the daily creative challenge page. If you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, it'll give you like a little spiel about how you oh, that's can, where it is. Um, okay. yeah, you can, you get like a little how does it work section that shows you um, how to get involved. Each day you receive a challenge, join the community chat, and you can click mm -hmm. that little oh, link. And you get like you source files so all the, mm -hmm. all the submissions are consistent. Yeah, so every morning one of these is unlocked so you can watch the video if you missed the broadcast where she did the challenge and you can click get started and that will give you source files and downloadable content for creating. That's cool. Um, yeah, and then you can uh, <laughs> join like the it. Discord and post your entry in there and then like me and Peter are going to do towards the end of the stream, we'll open up the Discord and uh, check out all of your submissions, give you folks a little shout out and uh, highlight all the stuff that you shared with us today. Um, but first, so, yeah. Mr. Fox. But first, Mr. Fox. <laughs> uh, so um, I think this is ready for processing and um, in this time, we're just gonna do this, uh, um, I'm gonna do the edit in Photoshop 2020. Yeah, let's do it. I am just like so 
impress and I have like much respect for you just like, okay, somebody says something in chat and you're just like, let's just do that. Let's just right. try that out. Uh -huh, like thank go you. for it, you know? Um, uh, although, um, is it taking its time? Maybe it's already over there. I'm not sure. Not all that. Oh. oh, there it goes. It's doing its little thing, loading. Nice. Oh, it's opening it. It just puts uh, it right over there for you. Well, let's see what, what image properties it gave me. Just whatever was um, default or... Percent. So 100% and uh, 50... Hmm. Well, I would have uh, had it go at, at um, 16 uh, mm -hmm. bit file. Okay. Um, and sometimes I would I would enlarge it a bit, mm -hmm. you know. So I liked it. I like to get close to a 24 by 30. Because that's a common oh, print yeah. size that I'll sell. So then that's like your difference between like preferences as far as like just exporting it like you were, and then what you would want from just like sending it over to Photoshop. That would then be why you would probably do the other. In your that's one for... in until I figure out that preference in so I know. Nice. What's going to happen when I when I do that? Okay. Um, but that's like that's a respectable baseline preference, yeah. right? Yeah. This is one hundred percent, three hundred TPI, <laughs> uh, and so you just want to get up in the details a little bit more than that because it's going to be so large when it's printed and stuff. I like that. would rather increase it at um, uh, from the raw file mm -hmm. than increasing it later. So there's a lot of school of thought that. That just says go 100%, mm -hmm. leave it at 16 bit, mm -hmm. and then increase the you know res it up accordingly from there. Uh, but I still feel that I would rather bump it up in the raw in, in processing from raw, mm -hmm. and you know, and if I have to res up more from there, then I'll leave it at that because some of my prints get really quite big. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, How often did you do things that were as large as like that five by five foot? Print. Like, is that something that you do that often, often or is that like a special occasion sort of thing? Um, uh, that was that was a run of a few years. Really? When I was doing the really big prints. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, now, though, um, I mean, those are so expensive mm -hmm. and such an ordeal. I mean, I still get those, those orders, mm -hmm. but I'm not showing them. Though showing my my uh, my customers the you know that size so much right off, mm -hmm. um, because I I like the twenty four by thirty, and then my next size up is uh, uh, 30, I mean, 36 by forty four, mm -hmm. which is about you know it's kind of like well it's just bigger, yeah, <laughs> um, and. Framing is more, you know, is more affordable, especially mm -hmm. on the 24 by 30. Like, yeah, yeah. So I'm in a 24 by 30 mode because I can afford the framing and I can produce stuff and show stuff and, you know, so I, I did one show here in San Francisco mm -hmm. a few years back and it was almost all of it were four by five foot prints. Oh my goodness, wow. And it was beautiful. Wow. It was really, really beautiful. But I spent $14,000. Yeah, and it would be like a show. hassle even just, like not even just like the money and, uh, to spend, it would just like the sheer size of having that many prints that you have to like come in and install everything, and take care of and maintain. Yes. And that and so is a lot. Your transport, mm -hmm. it, everything like, you know, you torque a frame a little bit. And it's huge, and, and it's, you know, it's not and, like tipping and a, a... And a seam breaks, you know. and oh, gosh. then you've got to, you know, hire someone with a, uh, you know, hire an art mover just to bring it back to the framer oh. for them to, so it's... Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, there was a lot of anxiety there, so mm -hmm. I'm much happier with the smaller print size right now. <laughs> uh, 24 by 30 is still big, and but not that, but mm -hmm. it's not like massive, but I still offer the the, the super big prints, but it's On, more... Upon request, more, kind of, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good way and, to be, and, I think. And I am okay with that. I'm not doing like 
five footprints and stuff, but I usually like I like to go and um, do like conventions and stuff, and I do like sell my artwork and things there. And they typically have like a like a like a convention standard size, which is like an eleven by seventeen poster, which oh, okay. is kind of an odd shape, but it's it's what if you go to um, a convention, any convention that has an artist alley, you will see almost every table has their largest prints in that size. And I did like the 24 by 36 for a while where I just had some of those, but it was such a hassle to print like the huge ones and not know if like people would want those that I kind of do the same thing. Like I have those sizes, but it's upon request and if nobody asks for them, then I don't have to lug them out and uh, show them off and everything. I just kind of keep them behind the scenes a little bit, right. which is much easier. <laughs> right. Do you sell prints online? I do, do you have yes. a little? You have a little shop? Mm -hmm. you, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have I'd like, like, a, like an imprint. Um, which I think is cool. I don't, um, I used to do prints where I would go and get them printed and then I would send them myself, but I've since started using um, a website called Imprint, which is wonderful. It's kind of like an uh, uh, by invite um, only, so everybody that is on it's the site It's a curated has, collection. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and they, it's different because a lot of people will use stuff like Redbubble or um, something like that where they're selling their artwork and stuff, but you get like a very small percentage of each sale. Imprint actually gives its artists 50% of every sale, which is like an unheard of ratio for something like that because I sold on Redbubble for a while. I sold a shirt for like 30 bucks and I think I got like a dollar and 25 cents for that $30 wow. sale. Yeah. Um, but 50% of every print sale on imprint is awesome. And um, it's like nice, like gallery quality, like like canvas oh. prints and things. It's okay. very, very nice. Interesting. Um, so it's, nice. it's great, yeah. Um, and that's typically where I like to do things. I feel like I enjoy doing the conventions more. Like, what about you? Do you, because you have an online shop, do you prefer doing like the online sales or being able to like sell in person and like talk to people? Because um, I like the, aspect of people coming and speaking to me about work and meeting other artists and things like that more than I like just having an online shop. It's a mixture mm -hmm. because each print sale is more, takes more bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And so I like having the online storefront just um, for people who, who find me mm -hmm. and they can shop it, they can see it framed and then they can, they can you know, um, make their decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I have clients come over and meet with me and look at work, sometimes um, it, it doesn't always result in a, in in a sale, sale. Mm. sometimes because it's just kind of overwhelming and it's really hard to show all the variations or the, you know, certainly not the image they're looking at in the frame that they want. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, for some people to visualize that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so. if you don't have it right there where they can be like, oh, this is what I would be getting. Um, so yeah, definitely understand that. <laughs> right. So um, here, I'm giving this new, the new one a try. Okay, and I yeah. think I'm doing yeah, this. Yeah, content aware fill. Am I doing this right where I'm gonna yes. um, remove all this? So everything that add. is green is what it's gonna be sampling from. Yes. I believe if you wanted to, so you have auto, rectangle, and custom over there on your right hand side. Um, if you hit custom, it will remove all of it for you and then you can go in and paint oh. what you want. Okay. Um, if you wanna do that. And rectangle will actually select a rectangle around, of space around where you did your selection. And then auto, is where it will look at what's inside the area that you are you have selected, mm -hmm. and it will um, basically guess. Can I do that where now? You, yeah, you can go ahead and click it. It'll guess where you where it thinks you want to be sampling from. Um, you may have to oh. um, zoom out a little bit to kind of oh, see oh, what it's, it's look, doing. Oh, that's right. It's right here. Um, uh -oh. Or zoom out on the the bigger we're, one. We're we're thinking. Oh yeah, he's uh, chugging along Wait, there. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Out there. And yeah, and so you um, can kind of toggle oh, between those two things. Is, um, there we go. Oh, okay, so I can do oh, auto. Let's go back to auto. Oops. Alberto wants to know if you've ever been part of art-based events in Miami Beach, Florida. I have not. He has not. 
Not, not as of yet. So how do I brush this in again? Um, if you want to oh, brush oh, it in, I'm you letting can just... it do it though. Yeah. You're what what it... if I want to subtract this? See how this area is not looking that good? Then what I would do is I would um, remove from the actual selection. So you can use the lasso tool uh, um, okay. right oh, in fun. there. Uh, from there, and you can actually subtract from the area that doesn't have any fur in it because it's it's putting fur out to and expanding that to the borders gotcha. of where you've selected. Let's see that? How do I do? There you go. And you can, uh, boom. So you can see oh. it kind of took that away, which is really cool. Um, I Dang. think the content aware fill is just something that is so fun to use. Um, I actually I did um, an interesting little tutorial on uh, using content to wear fill and like stamp tool and patch tool to um, touch up selfies that you have if you don't have headshots. Oh. So like removing logos off of shirts and uh, using content to wear fill to remove posters off of like the wall in the background of you or things like that. And I had such a blast. It's actually one of my most favorite tools to use. Um, just being able to go in and like touch up those little things. Um, so if you're, let's see, are you, oh, you're not still doing content to wear, Phil. Um, I, think I the, was gonna do something else, one. but um, yeah, I was gonna do the quick one, but that wasn't uh, working. Yeah, because so it'll fill that, that uh, on, uh, fur in there. Um, not, oh, I see what's going on here. So if you want to do that, you got to just make sure that none of that green is touching any fur and it's only sampling from the background. For this one, you could probably do auto. Okay, um, because I'm in the right, yeah. Because it I will, was in the wrong layer when it didn't work. Oh, there you go, yeah, yeah perfect. And so we can kind of keep it moving. And then this is what I would typically do is take like a piece. Yeah. And that, you know, sometimes even with the help of content to wear fill, sometimes I would rather do this. You would still, um, yeah. Yeah, I would still do that in, in some situations because it's just easier to snag, because that looks great. And you can just kind of fade it out and it looks wonderful. Um, and it adds like that little, like, like kind of sharp, like cohesive little mm -hmm. bit um, to it real quick, um, which totally works. I feel like content to wear fill is like a, super like Adobe to the rescue when you have like a really big problem that you can't feasibly quickly. It gets the heavy lifting remote. done and you yeah. go in and you. The stuff you might spend it. hours and hours trying to nudge around and, mm -hmm. and Photoshop out or cut out or whatever, you know, um, it's definitely a lifesaver. But for tiny little pieces like that, that is actually um, kind of a doable thing. They're just cutting a little piece and moving it around. This is the cutest stream in quite a while from, from Jan. I uh, absolutely agree. Thank you, Jan. Question for Val. Have you ever used Etsy before? Um, you know, I made an Etsy shop and I did not continue on with it, mostly because um, I prefer, <clears throat> and I don't know if you've ever used anything like that, Peter, but I prefer either to have my print shop online where I don't actually handle the prints. Like I've ordered samples, so I know the kind of quality my oh, okay. customers are getting, mm -hmm. but I don't handle any prints. Somebody else prints and ships them to people for me. Um, and the only time I actually deal with physical prints is when I go and get prints myself, and then I go to a convention where that's more of like a like an experience sort of thing. Um, because I'm interacting like face to face with every potential uh, sale that I could make, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Etsy it seemed like uh, for me, some people really thrive in that that sort of thing. But for me, it seemed like a lot of extra work to do with like packing everything and making sure I have those packing materials on hand. You, you make more, but it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of work and. Um, to charge a decent price for everything and still get paid for all of my shipping and handling and my my heavy lifting costs and doing things is not right. wasn't worth it to me. And, and at very least you kind of need like a spare bedroom to Exactly. to exactly. have a, you know, mailing and shipping and mm -hmm. um, or like a little workstation. Uh, workstation and, um, you know, keep your printer working and mm -hmm. all all those components. Um, I, so I, I, I'm more involved. Mm -hmm. I have a printer here in San oh, Francisco, nice, Light nice. Source, 
Um, and they act as kind of like another pair of eyes for me. And they actually so, look over your your work. Yeah, they'll thing. call me and they're like, oh, this this needs more sharpening, or it's not mm -hmm. it, you know, or I found it, you know, there's the, the, uh, there's an area here that's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, um, if they have a problem with their printer. Uh, you know, they fix their printer, mm -hmm. you know, or they have an extra, they have, they'll move it over to another printer. Nice, nice. Um, especially, you know, with, with big prints, I mean, it, you might have a big printer, mm -hmm. and if it's working and everything's awesome, it's great, nice. but then you're often doing trimming, mm -hmm. which means you need a really big table. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. and, you know, and you need big sheets of glassine mm -hmm. to, to roll it, and you need to be very competent at rolling a print and know exactly um, what you're doing. Right, um, yeah. So, uh, so I will, I'll have them print, and I'll come over. And I'll inspect a, um, a test print, mm -hmm. and then I'll come back over and I'll sign the finished print, mm -hmm. and then they will roll it into a tube, and I uh, will ship the the tube to my framer. Gotcha. So okay. and that's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Like that's, it's doable. Okay. Like it and. Every time I look at the numbers of buying a printer, you know, it's tempting. I'm always tempted. Mm -hmm. but, but then you have to maintain really nice. that printer, right? You have uh, to. A big printer lights, mm -hmm. needs to work. Yeah. And if it doesn't work often, it will clog. Yeah. And, and then, you have to continue to purchase all of the ink and whatever for all of this thing. It seems like it would be like, you know. It, it's it's a big deal. Yeah. A lot of people do it, but mm -hmm. um, it, it is kind of a big deal. So you can see in here, this is uh, uh, pretty cool. Uh, um, Oh, things. nice. Yeah. Oh, yes. It kind of really brings his eyes out. I right? like it. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and I would almost, let's see, let's just, uh, um, what do options levels. do you yeah. have for printing if you could share? Um, for me, I feel like, I feel like you and I are going to have very different methods of like printing. Like you, go through like a pretty awesome printing process it seems like with someone who checks over your work for me doing like like comic-con you know like printing art prints that are like like mass printing art prints for like several convention days um i feel like i have maybe a little more leeway than you might where you're like printing out these really um high quality um uh, photographs um <laughs> prints um there's a lot of ways that you can go. There's a lot of places like cat print is an excellent place to get stuff printed. Cat print, you can do like gold foil and stuff on your on your work too, and they're very um, cost effective. Um, you can also get, and this is really interesting, somebody told me um, about this, um, and I have done this, and it's actually really great. Um, you wouldn't think that an Office Depot would be a great place to go and get like tons of art prints, like if you're printing artwork, um, but their prints are actually really, interesting and really high quality and you can get what I got which is like a store purchasing card if you can call in and tell them that you're going to be printing um, the same way a small business would print they will give you a card that gives you a large discount on their print and ship area. Mm. So the way I explained right. it to them is I'm going to be printing prints the same way a restaurant will print menus. Okay. You know, I'm going to be constantly updating and sometimes if I have leftover prints, I might still need to do a print run for a new um, convention. I might be doing a convention every month, you know? Um, and they will set you up with an interesting business account. They will hold your files for you so you don't need your flash drive. You can go to any Office Depot in the country and they have your files on file. So if you travel for conventions, they have them there and wow. you can go in and, and make your prints. That is a super awesome way. Um, if you're an artist and you travel around and sell prints that so you could do that. Um, I think that that and cat print is what I've, I've heard is like the two like great places that you can go. Um, cat print is another one of those places where you have to place an order and then they ship you like a huge stock. Uh, but from what I have heard, and I have ordered from them before myself, um, their prints are always high quality. Um, if there's an issue with their prints, they're always very quick to resolve issues. Um, and they're not very expensive, um, which is the problem sometimes if you're going to order um, like 500 prints of something sometimes it can be a little pricey if you're going to travel around and, and do that. That's what you do with yeah, your prints. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, they're I'm, pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty fortunate to have a lot of 
online or reasonable amount of online sales at nice, this point. Nice, nice. Which is nice because it's hard to travel with mm -hmm. big prints mm -hmm. and fr framed prints, especially. Yeah, I've seen people um, who do who do travel for events and stuff. They end up having to like if they go to a convention center. There's usually like a FedEx or like a UPS place in the convention center, and people mail giant boxes of their uh, stock to the convention center, and then they pick it up at the convention center, and then set up their booth, and then they pack it all up and go back and mail it back to themselves so they don't have to lug all the stuff, right. just like boxes and boxes and boxes of yeah. stuff, which is crazy. It's. But it would be tough for you having things framed and and all that kind of stuff. I can't imagine what, have you ever done like an event like that? No. no. Well. The, the closest I've done was uh, um, I did a pop-up uh, uh, doggy photo booth. Oh, that's cute. In my neighborhood in mm -hmm. the Mission. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really cool street fair called the uh, uh, that Noise Pop produces. Mm -hmm. It's called the 20th Street Block Party. That's cute. And, you know, so it's on my block. And, and Noise Pop are my neighbors in my building. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they hooked me up with... You know, they. I don't have to pay the sponsorship mm -hmm. stuff, and because it's kind of a feature mm -hmm. of the of the of the thing. Okay. Um, and that was the first time I actually like made some eleven by fourteen and sixteen mm -hmm. by twenty prints, and I put them in uh, um, sleeves, uh, sleeves mm -hmm. with little cardboard backings, mm -hmm. and Which is about what made I do. A, yeah. made a few cards, and um, and there were a lot of sales on yeah. that. The the people were definitely more like about the 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 pop-up booth mm -hmm. and you, you know and as I do I light it with strobe nice, and nice. Um, and I have a little set there and um, oh my god we I photographed are we my team um, and I photographed 35 dogs really so yeah. was it like a booth a where line. people could bring their own dogs it was a very dog friendly street fair it okay was super, you and know, then you just you just like do it wasn't like your typical your street food it was oh, you know so all cool. the all the food were like mm -hmm. like flour and water and mm -hmm. you know uh it's the uh, tartine and you know all the fancy you know so everything was like super local or mm -hmm. super handmade you know like it um and so it's dog friendly mm -hmm. and the dogs in that neighborhood are Super cute, yes. super nice, super. Oh, I'm so happy. That's so great. That sounds like it was so much fun. <laughs> it was exhausting, but yes, it was fun. So, um, I I think we're good here with Tuck. Yeah, I think he looks very handsome. At, at least to the point where I would uh, make a print mm -hmm. and you know uh, uh, put it up and and sleep on it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. See. And then, so I That's feel the next day. That's typically what I have to do when I finish a painting. I'm just like, I like this, but before I post before it, before I do it or I'm call gonna, it, yeah, I'm gonna you know, sleep on it. <laughs> and, and, and so, in a perfect world, what I would do for my artwork here is, you know, I would um, you know, decide that, you know, if I like the color, the mm -hmm. touching, the work, um, everything that's going on, then I would go and make the sizes that I do, mm -hmm. which. Um, Sometimes it's going to be custom to the image, but usually I try to keep them in a in a consistent form, okay. size wise. Mm -hmm. um, that's just because I I'm doing the my Shopify site myself, and mm -hmm. you know. Um, but anyway, uh, then I'll, I'll make the various file sizes. Okay. Print some sixteen by twenties. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that I have a perfect sample print on the paper that I like. And then um, and then my printer keeps that sample print. Gotcha, okay. So they and have. So, and when I get a thought, when I get a, uh, an order, um, so it's a little bit of a higher price deal. So I get an mm -hmm. order and then um, on the bottom of the print, I would put in the, the, the animal's name, the mm -hmm. date, uh, and the edition number on the right. Nice, and nice. A, um, and the edition numbers like say, um, number and then blank out of uh, 50. Mm -hmm. And then when I go to the lab to sign the print, I hand write in that number mm -hmm. and give it a, and, and sign it. Yeah. And then they roll it and then I send it to the- uh, That's what I, I do with my, with my limited prints. Um, and I just keep them in like a, I, I actually only sell those ones 
in person at the conventions, but yeah, I have like a little like a little thing on them that's like such and such number out of this many in the run, and that's that's kind of a fun thing. Yeah, kind of a cool thing to do. It's very exclusive, very like nifty, yeah. you know. So. It's it, it's an accounting mm -hmm. trick, mm -hmm. but um, you got to do it. <laughs> All right, so now I I can press Command W to close this, right? And it'll go back, take me back to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, yeah, I believe so. Let's see what happens. Oh, there it is. Um, I'm gonna check um, out chat real quick too, just to make sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, any uh, uh, stay on top of it. Yep, there's the. I'm hooked on Lightroom. Haven't edited in Photoshop in a long time. This from uh, Ebony. Um, shipping huge boxes to centers for trade shows. Quinn knows all about that. Um, Alberto says, Peter, you should come do shows for um, Art Basel 2020. Oh, wow. Uh, Jan wants to know, do you dodge and burn every photograph? How do you decide what to darken and what to lighten? Do you just eyeball it or it just like comes from experience, just knowing when it needs it and when it doesn't? Well, if I if if I'd let it right mm -hmm. in the beginning, then uh, I'm I'm just accentuating. I'm kind of nursing some areas up and mm -hmm. some areas down. Gotcha. Uh, so there's kind of a gut thing, but there's a look and feel that I know mm -hmm, of my work that I work towards. So uh, a, a good example would be the um, uh, uh, the alpacas. Yeah. And because we kind of talked about that the first day, where you got that those shadows on that fur like really well, and you didn't have to do too much to touch up like that neck because you had shot it a very particular way. Right. Um, let's show you raw here. Oh my gosh! Does this one have a name? So this is raw. Raw. Oh, his R -A -H. name is raw. Okay. Yeah, and he's a wakaya. Oh, he's beautiful. Alpaca. Um, so he does not have the long curly locks. He does have like an awesome, like righteous hairdo and a little beard. He looks like no. a cuddly black Abe Lincoln. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> he, does. <laughs> he is so cute. He needs a top hat. And you can see my touches here. Like I'll accentuate his smile just by um, highlighting the lip just a I little do bit. I have a little smile. And then I will. Um, you know, so I in so the I I grooming him just with lightening and darkening. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll darken the shadows just a little and I'll lighten the highlights. And by going in here, then um, you're really accentuating what's you know what's already there. Mm -hmm. But but you are pulling it out. Okay. Right? So, gotcha. Um uh Abeny says uh Adobe Live came for the photography tips, stayed for the printing seminar. Ah, <laughs> funny. <laughs> nice, very nice. And this is something you don't see every day, a picture of a camera. Yeah, yeah this is, well, <laughs> this was a, the, the, the starter. Um, uh, this is uh, Hippo. Um, and he is a hairless guinea pig. Oh, I thought you were telling me that that's a hippo. I was like, Peter, I hate to break it to you. That's but, not a hippo. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> that is so cute. And he's a he's a hairless what? Guinea pig. Guinea pig. What? Yeah. They look like hairless. I guess guinea pigs without hair look like those. Um, I can't remember what they're called. They live in the forest and they kind of have like they look like large mice and they have like that kind of like boxy head. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And they're like, the, it's like about the size of a dog. And they, they look very similar to that, but they're all wow. brown. Okay. And they're right. like they're like the largest rodents in the world or something. And they look very similar to that. Somebody in chat, I'm sure, will know what I'm talking about. It has a really weird name. Um, and I don't, I feel like I don't have enough information to Google and figure it out. Like I don't, I would be Googling like giant rodent with box head. It's just not gonna work. So uh -huh. you guys will have to figure it out for me. Um, capybara, yes, Sam knows, the capybaras. Oh, it, it, the capybaras, yeah, there you go. It okay. looks very similar to like the head shape and body shape of a capybara. 
Also, we've got five minutes until our design feedback countdown. So if you have not uh, entered the challenge yet, uh, please do so. If you are not finished with your challenge entry, please uh, submit your entry to the Discord anyways, because we just want to see what you're working on. Works in progress are 100% welcome. Uh, and feel free to let us know, like, hey, I'm posting this. I'm not finished. This is my plan for the rest of it. But some feedback now would be cool. Um, that is totally fine. Um, and uh, we will take a look at them in just a few minutes. Nice. And so I'm just taking his, um, so it was a little, you know, because this is that one uh, white spot. Mm -hmm. yep. He has like a little, like a little snout floof going on. You know, like he's just got that little, you know. Yeah, it's like, a little floof, but, um, it, it was just a little a little hot right there because mm -hmm. the, the rest of him is lit uh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of mask that area. And then let's see, we'll make a new one and uh, wait. run new. His little... Uh, legs like where they connect into his body kind of remind me of the folds in like frog legs or like toad legs you know how they have like when they have a really heavy upper body their skin kind of folds over the arm just like that which is like very interesting oh yeah and you know uh yeah he's cute he's very cute he's he's yeah um so I am not getting, again, with my, oh, I know what it is. It's my, uh, no, my density's up, my feather, my size, let's see. So I'm not quite getting, like, the noticeable reaction because I'm trying to just, there, I go, okay. Val's jacket resembles the color palette from her artworks. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, Hexel. Um, and Nikita says, serious animal, posing like a general before the final battle. Right. He's very majestic and uh, serious right now. Absolutely. Okay, come on. I wanna... This is me getting used to, to the Lightroom flow. All right. Um, so from here, let me uh, go to edit in Photoshop. I would otherwise do more that use the mask tool to um, uh, increase and decrease the highlights, but um, I'm still getting used to the the Lightroom application, so gotcha. I can I think go you're doing right great. into Photoshop here. Um, so Hippo uh, uh, was at the SPCA here, and I saw him on Instagram, mm -hmm. and. I just thought he was so cute, so I messaged, messaged them and asked them if I could photograph him. Uh, and they let me come over and do this. But I, I have a relationship with the SPCA, I do their mm -hmm. annual reports and stuff, so, uh, you know, it was, you know, um, he, so in talking with this particular department that has, it was, that was caring for Hippo, mm -hmm. um, I got one of the coolest emails ever, or the funniest mm -hmm. emails, explaining that it's it's okay to come photograph Hippo, but mm -hmm. you should know that he has a little problem um, that sin since he was neutered, uh -huh. um, has a rare, it would ha occasionally happens, is a, 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 an issue where his penis is out. Oh no! All the time. And so he all and constantly. I just want you to be okay with that. <laughs> they have to warn you, like, don't freak out when you get here. He has a little issue. Oh no! <laughs> just so you're not shocked. I would frame an email like that. Somebody warning me of I about should. something of that That's nature. That's a really good idea. Pertaining to a hairless uh, uh, guinea, guinea right. named Hippo. Right. That's hilarious. And. So, you know, and of, of course on set, it was a little awkward because. Was he embarrassed? After all of that, a, after <laughs> all of that, you know, I'm thinking, oh, there it is. <laughs> no. Oh. 
Because <laughs> now you're like hyper aware. Like, of I it. should photograph it. No, no, <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. He would be so embarrassed. And then I'm like, Peter, oh, I just that. considered that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor thing. All right. Well, that is our design feedback deadline. Um, so maybe we'll pop over there and look at some of our. Um, our entries, and then if we have time, we will come back to Hippo and give him another look see. All right. Um, also, I have to say, I do like Hippo's little bottom lip there. He just oh, sticks yes. out. He's very cute. Uh, He's so cute. Um, all right, so this is what we are working with today. So today's challenge description was create a postcard using transform tools and smart objects. Uh, so let's see. This is the one that Kathleen posted, and she asks, what other kinds of phrases could I use? So she says, keep your chin up. This is really cool. I like these uh, hands kind of coming out of space here um, behind the letters and all of the um, kind of perspective going on here. I love that. Um, I also like uh, just the values on these hands, too by the way, like, cause it's just like, it's almost like they're mannequin hands, but they have the texture and shape of like real hands, which I think is cool. Yeah. It's kind of There's interesting. just enough surreal there mm -hmm. to yeah. really, yeah. Very cool. Um, and then these are from Steven. So it looks like Steven did a few different ones with the phrase, I feel good. And as soon as I read that, I just, in my head, I hear, na, 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 na. I knew I, that oh, I would. I feel good. <laughs> yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, yeah. Peter gets me. Uh -huh. He knows. <laughs> Thank you for not leaving me hanging on that. <laughs> um, so these it was are cool. close, but I got you. Yeah, you did. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so I like the the, the different um, orientations that you have um, kind of uh, chosen to orient these these letters. Um, I can't tell which one I like more though. Like I like the color. I like that there's like kind of a drop shadow and also. Um, actually, I can turn this so that you know you can. Oh, I'm looking at it. Oh, you've yeah. seen it up here yeah. too. Okay. Um, but thank you. I like the stroke, like the, the the white stroke on that as well. It feels very fun, you know, very energetic. Um, but which which one do you think you like best? Like with the I feel up here, or I kind of, I think I like the top one. I myself. think I like the top one. Um, I, I I think I'd like I'd rather it. I'd, I'd like to see it, like if you had like a trapezoidal shape to adhere to not that yeah. you would use the shape but it would be continue like it would fit so the the way the good is um laid forward and stretched out mm -hmm. if the eye feel kind of lined up lined up and then it like kinda, edge to edge to yes edge kinda. and then at that point you the, the text can even like run off the edge yeah, yeah. too very nice um, but uh, yeah that's a good uh, maybe, that's a good suggestion um, his Ronnie with you can do it. I don't know if that was again. within that bound. I mean, yeah, I think, and I was thinking the same thing. And it was kind of like, honestly, it's kind of similar to what Ronnie did here, where Ronnie kind of put like, like the edges, like, like pretty lined up, I think, with mm -hmm. these. I would say for this one, personally, the one thing that does stick out to me is I wish there was a little bit more space between the words here. So, like, the T touches the C, and then the bottom of U touches do it here pretty yeah. closely, and then there's um, not any space between that U and that C uh, or if right that, there. if that T moved down just a skosh and then in the I moved to the left. Yeah, if yeah. If you did one thing, you moved that I to the left a little bit, mm -hmm. Kern that. Uh, wait, no, 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 it's it's two words though. Okay, yeah, and now the I still needs a little more space for, before the T. What you could do to actually solve this is, um, I think that you have put your stroke on like either center or inside, you could try doing like uh, doing the outside stroke so that um, some of the form like of this T here is a little bit lost because the stroke goes on the inside of the shape of the letter oh, instead good point. of the outside. Yeah. So I would say maybe try and space them out slightly and then put the stroke on the outside and see if that improves the readability and the flow of um, the composition. But it's still very cool. It's still very nice. Um, and I love the hands as well. I think that they're they're pretty fabulous. Um, all right, let's see what we've got next. We got one from yesterday from Carrie, um, but we are gonna I'm gonna focus on today's to make sure we can get through everything people submitted today or as much as we can. So this is from Gerard. He says keep the faith. Cool. A lot of good um, spacing between here. 
Um, it seems like this F is a little it needs turning from the from the A, yeah. Yeah, but it's still it's still cool. It's still very bold. I like the color scheme here, uh -huh. with like kind of like a purple gradient, and then um, it kind of blends well with like the white of the hands and just like a nice bold um, text, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, it would but make a nice uh, room installation. Yeah, yeah, I like, think so. You know, if that filled the floor and the mm -hmm. two walls, yeah, that would yeah. be fun. All right, let's see. Um, this is from Sabash, uh, Wake Your Dreams. That's an interesting uh, yes. font um, and background, honestly. Uh -huh. and, um, and Very cool. Uh -huh. and, and word word choice. Yes. Wake, Wake Your, your dreams. dreams. Yeah. Almost like bring them to life, kind of, Yeah. what I kind of think of. Yeah, so in, yeah, in this one, I love the wake and your, but that I'd love to see the, the dreams way bigger and stretching off into the distance, into the distance, you yeah. know, sort of like the Star Wars. Yeah, like you know. the crawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that's the dreams is your, you like know, infinite. Expansive. It's in, yeah. yes. Very nice. Yeah, I love this. Very well done. And that, that font is cool with the with yeah. the colors and the little. I love all the little inner, compartments. Yes, like inside. A little, a little part. Very cool. Um, Valentine uh, Pierce. I'm. T I'm Told only New, or New Orleanians think purple, green, and gold go together. Do you think so too? Um, that's funny. Um, I have a lot of family in New Orleans, and they do swear by purple, green, and gold. And I'm always just like the purple and the purple and gold, maybe. Uh huh. The, the green added in. I I'm on the fence, but I still think this looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. It actually the 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 goldish color that you have looks more green than anything to me. Um, I guess maybe this is oh, gold up here. There's the gold. And gold, and gold there. Um, the the happy the the the, the middle font there. Uh -huh, the happy, happy Mardi, Mardi Gras, Gras yeah. and the date and the o uh, two two nine two. Um, in, that would work better in gold, I think. I right think so there. too. Yeah, and maybe mm -hmm. some of the outline. I like that it has like a. It almost looks like a room, like the way that you've separated everything here, which is really cool. Um, oh, I the, always think mm -hmm. that purple and green goes well together, though, because I'm a Beetle, Beetlejuice fan. Oh, okay. So anytime Fair I see enough. those two colors, I'm like, ooh, yeah. Right. Um, the gold I will I will accept as well. I'm working with cool. the gold and purple. Yeah, that's, I am. That, that's the the two on the right is um, uh, uh, needs a little justification. A little the O is mm -hmm. a little large. It's it, there, that's a challenge there, right? Because it's you're, you're you're filling that whole quadrant with two letters, mm -hmm. and so by design, those they're going to be kind of out of proportion. So to maintain that perspective is a it, it, like it's a, a bit of a trick. And I would say what you could do um, to kind of get around that is like yes, put it into a little bit more um, perspective, but you could make them as thin as the letters in welcome, and then just put more space between the two like front and back edges of the word and the borders of that, um, I guess you could call it a wall that they've created in this piece. Um, so you could put that, you, you know, you could put more distance there, similar to how there's more distance between the E in this edge and the W in the edge in cool. Welcome. Right. Um, and that would maybe look a little more cohesive. Nice. Um, but well done. That was from Valentine. Um, Eduardus says, day three, create a postcard using transform tools and smart objects. Keep your chin up. I like it. Um, I almost wish that chin up was a slightly different shade of like orangey yellow than keep and your, because it kind of adds like a little like variation. And maybe it is slightly, but it's not as noticeable as the keep and the not your. Not quite as noticeable, right. But I think that I think that if you leave keep and chin up the same color and keep your a different color, it makes me want to put the sentence emphasis on the word your, which is kind of strange. That's at least what I do in my head. Your. Like when I say it, like I want to emphasize that word because it's so much brighter than the others. Yeah, right, right. Which is kind of a weird sentence then, but if they were all different colors, then you'd just read it. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, but still yeah. cool, like that's just a personal uh, personal suggestion. But. but I mean, I could see the keep your chin up. I mean, not that. I oh, I guess, I yeah. work with that. I didn't really I, do I'd it that I'd almost like to see head. the. The, the U in mm -hmm. your start at the point of the P in key. Yeah, yeah. And then end at the height that the R is. Okay. If you're going to say Do it like, like that. A, yeah, because then that is then like Then the text can, can occur. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. 
Nice, nice. All right, and that was from Edwardus. Let's come over here to uh, Ant. This is interesting. Uh, have a good day. I'm surprised I, th it's very, very faint. I'm surprised I read that, but I did. Does it, is it as obvious to you as it is to me or is it a little too faint? I see like have a good and the day is down here in green. Yes. It is uh, a little it's faint. A little, it's a little faint that um, uh, I would, that the highlight on the image, mm -hmm. um, if Over here in the corner and up there. No, that highlight's cool. This one here. The, the, where, the, where the sun hits, but mm -hmm. I get it. But um, if if that were just, you know, consistent with the rest of the, the, the curved wall, mm -hmm. um, and then you would have more room to play with where you put your day, mm -hmm. and then uh, play with that contrast between the day and the image. So the read was quicker, but that high, that sun highlight um, takes your eye right there where no, there is nothing. So it 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 doesn't um, it, it you know like it does kind of drag your eye down there, and then that's kind of past where you're supposed to be reading. Right. So you so. have to kind of back out and go around because there's some cool stuff going on there. I I'd, I'd love to see. The uh, the day actually curve with oh, the window cool. wall, right? That could with be that. very cool. Yeah, because the ha the, the the A and the good kind of looks like it's going that direction with those um, little cutouts in the wall, and the have looks like it's flat against that ceiling right. or whatever that is. But yeah, day is the only one that doesn't look like it conforms. But if you did do that curve, I bet that would be cool. So we'd love to see you try that. That was and, ant. And, and yeah, I'd, I'd say love to see I'd say you try leave, it. leave the thumbs up out and, and yeah. it could be, you could really play with the uh, the graphics that the, the have could actually run below the, in a, circ in, in a curved circle below yeah. the uh, the window there. With that yeah. I don't know if that matches the challenge, but. Um, well, I think with with any of these, like we kind of give people like a, here's the, a, the base of the what base you're supposed level. to do, mm -hmm. but change it as you see fit mm -hmm. and do your uh -huh. own thing. And you have so. like 25 minutes. Yeah, so 25 <laughs> minutes. Well, <laughs> yeah. well we, we release them at eight in the morning. So okay. they have like a few hours until our deadline. Okay. Um, um, but sometimes people, they show up at the beginning of the stream where they show up a little late to stream and they only have like a few minutes. So sure. not everybody gets the same amount of time. Right. But um, definitely you can totally change it however you like. Uh, maybe you like it the way it is or maybe you'd like to try some of the suggestions that Peter shared. Uh, we'd definitely be interested to see. Uh, let's scroll down here. Uh, Diagonal Lee says, first attempt, but I really like it. Um, I think mine looks cheesy. I'll probably try again after work because I got artist block. I don't know. I don't think it looks cheesy at all. I think the only thing that I would want to see is I want I would want to see this in kind of mm -hmm. dripping down a little more like the believe and yourself. Um, and maybe a little more emphasis on the, the bottom um, a stem of the uh, two E's here, so they don't look like F's. Yeah, but I, I think the mm -hmm. general like idea of this is pretty darn cool. Like, yeah. very cool, very nice shape. It looks like everything is like in perspective the way that it should be to yeah. follow the lines. Right. Um, and it all has like a nice color aesthetic. Like, I think it's. Neat. It, do you have anything? It does. To say? It does look a little better on on screen here. See, mm -hmm. my head is. Um, Finish, uh, I'm at the end of the, the purple mm -hmm. stretch. Um, and so if I, let's see, I'll move, there you go. And then that that way you can, like, really it works it. a little better mm -hmm. with, without me kind of interrupting that. that yeah, because it continues um, I, on. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's throwing me off. Um, so when I look at it here on your screen, I'm, I, 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 I'm liking it. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. nice. Um, I would I wouldn't uh, sell yourself short. I think you've done a, a really good job. Um, and if you wanted to do another one when you got home from work, definitely go for it. But I think that you're on a very interesting track, and I, I like what you've done. So great job, um, Lee. Uh, Helen Ann says, first attempt needs more playing, I think, working one-handed uh, because I did fall. Oh, no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Please don't fall, is what she writes. So she fell, and she's only working with one hand today because I, I assume that means she injured herself. Oh. So she's doing her, her okay. project with one hand today. <laughs> well, 
Then that's an A plus. Yes, yes. Um, I actually really like um, how you have done like the perspective against the um, the ground there for fall looks really great, and I love that you have kind of skewed the letters um, and skewed that L for it to fall, which is kind of a nice touch. Um, so that's very cool. Uh, also very well done if you're only using one hand. Absolutely. Kudos I, to um, you. Uh, you could have, well, again, the challenge, the uh, parameters, the challenge, um, it, it, if you just left out please, mm -hmm. and then you had don't sitting on the on the floor in front of fall, mm -hmm. and then you can really emphasize the fall with the, you know. With the L, yeah. Yeah. yeah very nice. But I, I think, I think this is a three wall thing. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. So, is like, um, you know, that gets that but thought anyone, gets negated anytime, accordingly. Yeah, anyone, when, anytime could do their own thing, whatever you guys want. I'm sure Kathleen would not mind if somebody did more than three walls or if somebody did less than three walls. Oh, okay. I'm sure she would think that that she was would, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so that was really nice. This one is from Tan. Mm. I am loving this already. Oh yeah. Think outside the box. Uh, and there we mouse go. Illustration outside the box. Now that is Bravo. super cool. Yeah. This is great. I love the like how you have the box like over here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a quick read. I do. See it. I do want like a little more light, maybe <clears> right here, maybe brighten the, the font. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, well, either the right the font mm -hmm. if the font were a little because the, um, the the actual base ground there is a pretty nice color with all the rest of this here and you know if you took the left the front left corner of that box mm -hmm. and stretched it forward mm -hmm. it would look even more like yeah it was like, yeah um, but I think very that nice. would you know and the um, the the mouse and the colors it's just it, it's working yeah. Um, we've got about maybe eight minutes left here, so I'm going to go through maybe two more of these, and then we are going to um, say goodbye to you. Oh, Peter, and that's a wrap. Familiar. No more hippo. Yeah. We could come back to hippo. We could do one more and then come back to hippo for a few minutes if you'd like that. Okay. Or okay. maybe I can I can just uh, cruise another another set of images. I don't think we'll have time for another set of images. Uh, well, I mean, just show the. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, you can like, cruise through them I and show uh, them off. Queue, I can queue up. Something. Absolutely. So let me, uh, I'll, I'll see what I've got here. Yeah, so let me find one from today. Um, I feel like, I don't think that this one from um, Ariella is for today's. Um, I feel like it's entirely appropriate that the first one I see that is from today's is Ken um, Colley's here that is Star Wars themed. It is killing me. Um, anger, fear, aggression. <laughs> the dark side, are they? Once you start down the dark path, uh, forever will it dominate your destiny. Um, that's an excellent quote um, from, we were just talking about Yoda uh, today, about oh. how um, uh, Piney's Piney little, the younger. little uh, pose was very Yoda-like. You're gonna have to remind me of those other names. I have um, to take some notes, but. Petunia Picklebottom, was that one oh, of them? I feel like Pickler. something. And Pickler, I, I modified and Sharpie, Sharpie. Sharps or Sharps was a good one. Um, there were a lot of really awesome oh ones. Oh boy. This is fabulous. Um, I love the the perspective, the three walls of Yoda. Um, that was from Ken, and we don't have enough time to go through all of them. I'm gonna switch over maybe to um, uh, Peter's screen real quick so we can click through a few more images. That is just too cute. Um, what, does he have a name? This is Izzy. Izzy. She. She. Yeah. Uh, and she's uh, a BFF with my dog. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. little uh, friends. And so, and this is shot in, in my studio at home here in San Francisco. Uh, and so there's not a lot to do here, um, which is why it's a good one to pull up. And this is a simple, literally a one light set. And not, oops. That's in Capture One that does that. Okay. Um, and then I would kind of clean up. I would mm -hmm. do, do a little, bring up some of the highs and bring down some of the lows. There we go. She's so cute. Isn't she cute? She is. I love when dogs have those little eyebrow beans. You know, like just above the eye, it's yes. like a little circle that's like a slightly right. different color. They're very expressive. I call them brow beans. Yeah, I think they're super cute. So I might kind of 
toe beans and brow beans are like the best things ever because toe beans are like the little pads, like the soft little oh, pop pop pads which, um, that are cute. Brings, <laughs> like me little to, beans. <laughs> brings me to my dog, Wilford. Oh, he's precious. Oh no. I like how they both are kind of like laying the same. Right. They're definitely like minded dogs. You can tell. And he's got those little, uh, you know, he get those white socks. Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you call them? Paw pad? Um, uh, pads? Toe beans. Toe, toe beans. Toe beans. Um, yeah, the little the little paw pads or paw paw pads. <sighs> they look. I have like little names for little dog things. Like I just think it's cute. Okay. <laughs> um, but yes, he's a just just adorable. Um, we do have just a few minutes left before we take off. So um, one thing I want to do before we okay. um, take off is I want to show off your website and let everybody know where oh, they can find you. you. Mm -hmm. um, this is petersamuels.com. Um, definitely check out um, his website because you can come through here and you can see his animal. Photography, people, people and animals, personal artwork, commissions. You guys can check out mm -hmm. his print shop. He's and got then, a wonderful print right, shop. Oh, uh, show her. Uh, you the, want me to go that, into the. Just to the, do a quick. Uh, so you go there, and that lot takes you to the Shopify store where mm -hmm. you can see the artwork. All the um, awesome prints. And uh, Instagram at, uh, uh, at Peter Samuels. Yep, right here. Let me zoom out a little bit because I am zoomed in. Um, so you guys can see uh, Peter Samuels on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Peter Samuels. Um, and you guys can come check out uh, his, um, not only your work, but a lot of behind the scenes uh, photos and and videos. Finished images, mm -hmm. some behind the scenes, right. Oh, like kind of the whole process here, um, which is really cool mm -hmm. uh, that you don't have on your website. So this is like an extra thing. You guys will um, get like a lot of cool behind right. the scenes. Oh yeah, that here. is a hippos this right, right there to the to the right one. Right here. Yeah, that is a, a hippos bonded pair. Oh. Um, and that is a floppy. A floppy bun ear bunny. Yeah, floppy oh, bunny. That is just precious. Um, so if you adopted so cute, hippo, you would have you'd to. You'd have to take him. Oh, that is so cute. I don't. I didn't know that. Oh wow. Just forgot what I was gonna say in the face of this beautiful dog and these interesting eyes. Oh, that was eyes. from the uh, pop up puppy booth. That's crazy. That in, is he uh, blind? Yes. Wow. Or massive cat cataracts. Wow, that is but, really cool. No, he was well functionally, if not blind, functionally blind. Functionally I mean. blind, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's where you can find um, Peter, uh, and uh, maybe we could just like kind of look at uh, your dog's beautiful face for a couple minutes while we say goodbye. Um, Sam, it was wonderful to see you. Jan, Tanya, Katie, Monir, um, uh, Sentaji, thank you so much, everyone, Ariana, um, and all of you folks for being here with us. We have the XD Daily Creative Challenge coming up right after us with Howard Pinsky, followed by um, Julia, uh, who will be here with um, the uh, logo design, uh, Julia Masalska, at the end of the day, kind of rounding out our schedule. We pull up the schedule for you now um, so you folks can see. Um, so definitely stick around um, for that because there is still a whole nother half of the day coming up after us filled with awesome design. Um, and we even have um, some pretty nifty design uh, segments coming up tomorrow. So we've got tons of stuff still planned for you this week. Um, Peter, it was an absolute pleasure getting to spend time with you and hang awesome. out and learn from you thank for you. these two days. Thank you, and thank you to the, uh, the our, our audience there. Somebody posted my website on the on the nice. chat. That's yeah, really that sweet. is Sam. Uh, and uh, it looks like your website and your Instagram, so people oh, can go ahead and click that link. Yeah, um, you guys are great. I, I, I've been learning as, I learn a lot mm -hmm. in, in these two sessions here. This it's has been, been really, really, really fun. Yeah, it's yeah. been super cool. Kudos to you for jumping into Lightroom and doing all this stuff. Right, um, thank you. Excellent talent, you. wonderful photographs. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you all for watching. I hope you stay tuned for the rest of our day. Bye-bye, everyone.